going to do some maybe not normal Christmas uh, message stuff. We're going to have some fun. Obviously, you can see we're going to wrap some gifts up here and things like that. Um, but how I wanted to start the service is I know most of you here, you know the Christmas story. You know the, 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 the Christmas, um, you know, how Jesus was born and the angel came and announced these things. But I, I saw this video online and it just very quickly tells the story up to the point of the shepherds. And so we're going to look after the story. But I want you to watch this video and uh, this tells you the story if you've never heard it before. Okay. And I know a lot of you have, but let's watch this. I really love that video it just very simply you know tells the Christmas story um, but it stops short of the shepherds right and the, and the wise men we don't hear that so we're gonna look at the story of the wise men this morning and I've got the text up there the, the wise men show up in Matthew chapter 2 verse uh, actually before that but this is where we're going to look here at the wise men how many wise men were there who knows okay a lot of people think three right we assume there are three because there were how many gifts? But the Bible actually never says that there were three wise men. Now on the Christmas cards, there's always three, right? In your nativity set, there's always three. We know there wasn't just one because it said wise men, magi, so that was plural. So we know there was more than one guy, but there could have been 40, you know? We don't actually know, but because they brought three gifts, we kind of figure that, well, everyone brings a gift and there's three guys. So just a little Christmas knowledge for you, trivia next time. You know, you're like, did you know there's not three wise men? Maybe it was 50. I don't know. So anyway, let's look at it. Matthew chapter 2, verse 11. This is um, actually, when they actually come. They've been following the star for a while. It says this, and, and they had found the baby. They had found what they were looking for. After coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother, and they fell to the ground and worshipped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now there's a simple, very, if we analyze this text, there, there's a simple um, thing that we can take away from here. And it's, it's very clear that in this passage, because Matthew would have written it if it was true, these gifts were not wrapped. Okay. It doesn't say anything about wrapping gifts, because if, if they were, this is probably what it would have said, what Matthew would have said. And it said, oh, and lo, the gifts were encompassed with about seven square cubits of paper, and the paper was covered within and without with pictures of Frosty, a man of snow. And Joseph purposed in his heart to cast the paper into the barrel of refuse. But Mary saith unto him, cease, man, drop the decorative parchment. It shall be set aside for future generations. And Joseph did roll his eyeballs. And it came about to pass that the babe was more interested in the paper than the frankincense, right? So that, obviously that's just kind of a little bit of fun and the story, but that's what it would have been like. And it's obviously very clear that there was no gift wrap on those gifts because first of all, it was guys, okay? And most men don't wrap gifts, and number two, it's because they were wise men. It, to me, it's just wise not to wrap a gift because it just doesn't make a lot of sense to me why you would wrap a gift for someone just to rip it right off. I mean, it just seems like wasted money and time and effort and, you know, those things. And so what's the point, really? So uh, we're going to, here in a second, wrap some gifts. I'm actually not too good at wrapping gifts. And I think most, and I'm being, I know, pretty stereotypical, most guys are, are probably, I don't know, there's just something about ladies, they can wrap a bicycle with a gum wrapper, you know what I mean? Um, and make it, you know, all covered up somehow. And for me, I'm like a cheapskate, so I always cut too short, and then you part, show part of the box. Do you ever do that? And you're like, oh, what am I going to do? And you try to camouflage it, right? And I don't do like bows. Bows are dumb to me because you can't stack presents on top of each other. I don't do those gift tags. I use a Sharpie. I just write your name on there with a Sharpie. That's what I do, okay? And um, I actually, I, you know, I don't wrap a lot of gifts anymore. The kids do that. They love doing it. So I'm like, here you go. Come on. Let, let's go do some. Dad's going to watch the soccer game. You know, so um, anyway, I, I, I do that. But 
women tend to be a lot more into it. Um, if any of you ever watched that show, The Office, on TV, it's on NBC. Yeah, Pam on The Office said, if you have to wrap, uh, if you have to use more than three pieces of tape to wrap a gift, you're doing it wrong. Okay, that's what she said. And so there's those ladies that are like the perfect gift wrappers. And then there are the people that I call the over-tapers. Do you know any of those? My sister-in-law, Victoria, is an over-taper. She tapes every single seam on the box, right? So not like, say like you're getting a box and this is your box. She'll literally tape every single seam on the box and then in the paper, every single seam in the paper. You need to like sharpen your knife to get into her gifts. I actually think one year she dipped it, she took it to the bedliner place and had it bedlined, you know, because we could not get into the box. So there are those people that overwrap and there are those people like me that kind of underwrap. And we're going to, we're going to watch this. I saw this video. You may have saw this on Facebook. This lady's good at rapping. She's quick. Watch out fast time. But anyway, you know, hopefully you're having a little bit of fun. You're thinking about gift wrapping, about gifts, about that type of thing. Um, obviously at Christmas time we exchange gifts and we learned, um, we learned about exchanging gifts and gifts giving, gift giving from God because he was the ultimate gift giver. Okay, and so I want to show you some verses here in the Old Testament, New Testament that have to do with God giving us a gift. This is probably the most famous, most prominent verse. John 3.16 says, For God so loved the world that he what? Gave his only begotten son that whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. James 1.17, we just talked about this a few weeks ago, says this, Every good thing given and every perfect, what's the word? gift is from above it's from God okay coming down from the father of lights with whom there is no variation or shifting shadow when Jesus was speaking to the woman at the well okay the Samaritan woman you might remember that one did I miss it? there it goes it says if you knew the gift of God okay if you knew the gift of God and who it is that says to you give me a drink you would have asked him and he would have given you living water. Ephesians 2, 8 says this, For by grace you've been saved through faith, and that not of yourselves, it is the what? Gift of God. 2 Corinthians nine fifteen says this, Thanks be to God for his indescribable gift. If we look at these passages, and there are a lot more, guys. There are a ton more verses that talk about God giving of himself, giving the gift of salvation. There are, if we look at these passages as a whole, we learn very quickly that God is the ultimate gift giver, okay? We've learned to be givers because of what Jesus has done for us. So the wise men bring three gifts, and I want for us this morning to look at those three gifts just really quickly, and we're going to pass some things around and share and things like that. Let's look at that passage again where the wise men brought these gifts, and these gifts had very specific significance for the situation. And we're not even sure, okay, we're not even sure that they understood what they were bringing. They brought some things that were foreshadowing, telling uh, you know, future things to happen. Let's look at those gifts. It says, after it, re rereading what we read before, after coming into the house, they saw the child with Mary, his mother. They fell to the ground and worshiped him. Then opening their treasures, they presented to him gifts of gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Now this morning, I wanted for us to talk about each of those gifts really quickly here. I've got some gold chocolate coins, okay? So pass these around. You can take a chocolate coin and eat it if you want to or keep it or give it to your neighbor. There should be plenty of those. This, does anyone know the significance of gold? Why gold was such an important, obviously it was very expensive, right? But why do you think that would have been important, an important gift to share with Jesus? What's that? Because Jesus was, that's right, Jesus was a king of kings, okay? The scripture says that he became our king, king of kings. He was a king of all kings, and gold was a gift that was given to royalty, okay? To a king, a queen, he was the prince of peace, he was royal. And so this gift of gold had some 
pretty specific um, significance. The next gift was what? What does it say? Frankincense. Now I got online and I found some frankincense and some myrrh. This is frankincense. You can pass that around as well. You can take a little piece of it if you want. Smell it. It doesn't really have much of a, a scent right now. <coughs> Excuse me, but um, you would burn frankincense. Okay, and so when you burn this stuff, it will give a pretty strong aroma. Now, why would the wise men bring frankincense to a little baby? Well, frankincense was used in the Old Testament times in the temple. And they would use frankincense as a aroma offering to God. They would burn this stuff and it would, you've maybe heard a fragrant aroma to the Lord. They would use this in the temple worship. And so it was foreshadowing that Jesus would become our high priest. Paul talks about this quite a bit, that, that Jesus became the high priest that offered a sacrifice that was good for all time. That there was no longer need of frankincense after Jesus was resurrected. Okay, There was no longer need of those things that He came to be the ultimate sacrifice for us by giving his life for us. So there's gold, there's frankincense, and then there's myrrh. This is also another spice. Pass that around. You can smell it. It doesn't have, this one smells a little bit, but, um, and you can take a little piece of that with you as well if you'd like to. The myrrh is a darker color. Myrrh was a spice that was used in the burial of people. Okay? So myrrh was used when we buried people when they would embalm a body you know nowadays if someone dies they go to the funeral home and those people they do what they need to do to take care of the body to preserve it for a time well back in Jesus time before that and even after that they would use this spice myrrh and they would embalm the body with this with this substance and so the wise men bring myrrh to Jesus and it's like why would you bring an embalming spice to a little baby right it was foreshadowing that Jesus would be crucified but not just crucified he would what he would rise to life again come back from the dead and become our ultimate sacrificial lamb so these gifts that the, sh that the wise men brought to Jesus, although it would have been very weird, maybe, for Mary and Joseph to receive gifts like this, I wonder if after Jesus was murdered and resurrected, if, if Mary didn't think back and say, I wonder if those guys knew what they were doing. I wonder if those gifts that those wise men brought me after I'd had Jesus. I wonder if God wasn't in the middle of that. If he wasn't telling us a story before it all even happened. And so I know a lot of times people think, well, what's the deal with those gifts? Those gifts were a foreshadowing. They were a, they were a way to tell the world that God knew what he was doing. Okay? He knew what he was doing when he sent his son to live perfect life to be our high priest he was our king of kings he was our high priest and he was our sacrificial lamb he was these things for us and so how I wanted to kind of close our time together this morning it, Lori and I were talking um, in the car on the way home from San Diego yesterday I asked her I said you know, if, if you were to bring Jesus a gift, okay? We've been talking about gifts, and I asked her this, and I said, I'm not talking like a baby gift, you know, not, not like, like, obviously Jesus grew up, right? He became an adult man, and he started ministering up till he was about 33 when he was crucified. I want you to kind of internalize this, and this might take us a few minutes to do, and I'm going to give you some time to think. But I want you to think about if you were to bring Jesus a gift for his birthday. And you could think of something 
that had some like, you know, spiritual significance. What would you bring him? You know, the, the text says that he was brought gold, frankincense, and myrrh. Those gifts represented him being a king, him being our high priest, right? And him being the ultimate sacrifice for us. And a lot of times, Jesus takes on different roles for us, okay? A lot of us see Jesus as a, maybe a healer. Maybe we, maybe we tend to identify with Jesus more as a, a leader or a guide or a friend. You know, Jesus took on many roles whenever he came to earth. And so I, what I want you to do for the next few minutes is I want you to think about if you were to bring a gift to Jesus for his birthday, and it could have some meaning between you and him, right? You ever get that person that you know well, like that special gift, right? That you know makes sense for you too? Like I want for us to think about that for the next few minutes. Jose's going to play a song. And I want you to think about if you were to bring a gift to Jesus, okay? What gift would you bring him? What gift would you bring Jesus? And I'm going to ask you to share if you're willing. So think about that. I want you to just kind of internalize that for the next few minutes. And, and think about what would you bring Jesus and why? Did, um, what'd you come up with? Like a lot of times we get to share with each other in here and, um, what would you bring Jesus? I don't want to give you a few, whatever, two minutes to think about it or whatever, but did anyone come up with something what you would bring Jesus? Would you be willing to share it? Yeah. An emerald and a diamond. Why is that? They're worth a lot. Yes. Awesome. Good job. Caden, yeah. A blanket? Why a blanket? You don't know? I think a blanket would be a great one. Yeah, did you have one, Michelle? Um, I would bring a picture of my family. Sure. Because without what he did for us, I wouldn't have family. Yeah. Or family. Perfect. So she said a picture of her family because without him, they you know they wouldn't be together. They wouldn't. She wouldn't have what she has. That's perfect. Yeah. No, hold on. I get to you. You would bring him shoes because when they were, um, back in those days, he didn't have anything to walk in. Great. What would you bring? Love. Love? How would you bring him love? What would you bring him to signify a, a huge hug? That's awesome. Yes. Uh, I'm not going to lie. He, I, it sounds a bit weird. Yep. Three things come to mind. Three things. Okay. A tape recorder. Like a video tape recorder. Yes. Yeah. So that way he can record what he says sure. for us for the future. Yeah. Sure. A signet ring. Signet ring. To show this is him in the special, like this is the Savior. Yes. Love it. And, uh, oh, yeah. Uh, like a key with the heart designs to show that he is the only one who can unlock. Unlock hearts. Cool. Very good. Yeah. Taylor. A BFF bracelet. Yeah, because he's your best friend. Perfect. Anyone else? What'd you bring? Yeah, Jose. I'd bring him a song. Bring him a song? Sure. Yeah, write a song. Perfect. Yeah. Yeah, Georgia. Yeah. Okay. She said bring a bell and to remind us to bring to ring out the good news. And a candle to signify the light that you brought to our darkness. Perfect. And a candle to signify the light that he he brought to bring to the dark world. Great. Who else? These are awesome. These are yeah, Lori. Okay. Okay, she said, bring him a homemade card with a heart drawn on it 
to let her let him know that he has her heart. Yes. Yeah. She said, bring like the ultimate, like a uh, Valentine's Day gift with the big, huge teddy bear and flowers and the heart sees candy because he's the ultimate gift of love. Yeah, uh, Kins. S- a snow globe. OK, why that? Any reason? Just because you want to, because you like snow globes. That's cool. Yeah. Okay, anyone else? This is awesome. I love like, you know, this is part of the Bible's letting it like sink in. Right. And what would I do in that case? Yeah. Mars. Okay. Bring him your daughter. Okay. It's good. Anyone else? Yeah, just chili pepper. Okay, why? Because he's got to know the good food. Yeah, perfect. Someone raise their hand over here. Yeah, Jacob. Okay, why? Perfect. Autographed jerseys and a football because those are things that mean a lot to him. Okay, perfect. What? Else? Yeah, Ben. Yes. Okay. Cool. Sure. So he said, give him, uh, give him your time, um, spending just quality time with him, but then also, uh, like Mary and Martha, serving. Okay, serving alongside him. Anyone else? These are these are really cool. Uh, I was a little afraid no one was going to say anything. Uh, I I said the same thing that Noah said shoes, but I said a little bit different. First of all, I'm a shoe guy. I love shoes, um, so that would just be you know just I like that. But shoes are hard to buy for people, right? You, it's really hard to buy shoes. At least don't ever buy me shoes because I probably won't like them. I've got a very you know unique taste unless I tell you what I want. But anyway. Um, but the reason I would do shoes is because for many years um, in the Border Patrol, I tracked people through the desert. You know, for eight years, I watched footprints in the desert, you know, for miles and miles and miles. And for me, I see like probably the most prominent role that Jesus plays for me is like a guide, right? That I want to follow him. And so I'm following, you know, his footprints. And so I want to know what footprints he's leaving, like what shoes he's wearing um, for me. So anyway, this is awesome. This is what... This is what the Bible is all about. When we read a text and we say, what would I do there? Like, how, could, how can I make this my own? And so this Christmas, I want you to think about, even if you didn't answer out loud, like, what would you bring Jesus that had significance for you, okay, um, and had significance for him? I want you to think about that over the next few days as we get closer and closer to the actual day I want you to think about that and, and take some time to, you know, you're obviously not going to physically bring him a pair of shoes or a candle or whatever, um, but just have that conversation with him and say, Jesus, I love you, and this is, this is what I would bring to you this Christmas, and here's why. And just spend some time doing that. You know, we've talked a lot about, um, you know, gift wrapping and had some fun and You know, even Ben this morning, you know, quite a bit introspective, like thinking about these things and bringing them into our heart. Um, But there's one thing that I want to share that that we can all bring. And there there might be someone in here that that's never given this gift to God. And the scriptures certainly say, and this may sound sound weird, um, the scriptures say that God gave his son as a gift to us. Right, that Jesus gave his life for us. But there is also a sense that we can gift our life back to God. Okay? 
Certainly the Bible says that God gave his only begotten son, right? That whoever believes in him shall not perish but have eternal life. We read that earlier, John 3, 16. So there's this sense that God has given us this ultimate gift in his son. But this Christmas, if you have never given your life back to God, it is by far the best gift that you could give Jesus this Christmas is your life your heart. I want you to think about that. Has there ever been a time in your life when you have said, God, I'm receiving that gift that you give me and I'm going to give you my life to control, my life, you know, to have. A lot of people will say this is asking Jesus into your heart. A lot of people say this is to take a step of faith towards God. Whatever words you're thinking of right now, okay, what it, the concept is, is that Jesus came as a baby, not to just live, but to live as an example for us to follow, but then ultimately give his life on the cross and be resurrected so that way we could live for him for eternity. And what I mean by giving your life as a gift to God this morning would be to respond to Jesus Christ in a way that you say, listen, I'm done with my own life. I want to put my faith in you. I want to trust you. I want to follow you. And so you kind of just like, you hand your life to Jesus as a gift and you say, here, do with it as you wish. I know that there's a lot of people in here that have already done that. They've already placed their faith in Jesus. They've already given their heart as a gift to Jesus, but if you're in here today and you've never done that, to, man, today you can do that. And you can do that simply by praying a very simple prayer that would, you know, go something like this saying, God, I'm, I believe I'm a sinner. I understand I'm a sinner. And I need you to forgive me. Father, I place my trust and my faith in you. I want to give you my life and I want to start living for you turn away from that old life and I want you to lead me and guide me guys if, if you'll pray that type of prayer this morning and the Bible talks about Jesus sending his Holy Spirit into your life and changing you from the inside out there's not a better gift that you could give than your heart to Jesus this Christmas and so that's how we're going to close I want you to think about that this Christmas is giving your life to him if you've never done that. Um, so I'm going to pray. Um, kids, you guys can come up to the stage for our last song. And ushers, I'm going to ask you to come forward as well for the offering. And I want you to think about this. I know there's it's hard not to look at kids whenever they're singing and doing stuff like that, but As the kids are moving up there, I, I just, I seriously want you to consider what I've asked. If you've never given your heart to Jesus as a gift and say, I want to follow you, I want to trust you, I want to live for you, then pray that prayer right now in the quietness of the moment. Just say, God, here's my heart. I trust you with my life. I turn away from my old way and I want to start living for you. Forgive me of all the sin that I've committed and make me a new creation. God, I specifically pray...